morning we are here to celebrate the risen king the king of kings the lord of lords he paid the price on the cross so that we might be redeemed and that we might have life i just want you to open up your mouths before we begin the service say father lord i thank you i thank you for my salvation i thank you O oh lord for your love father lord we adore you this morning we give you the highest praise O oh god only you are worthy only you are worthy of our praise may your name be praised jehovah king of kings we worship you lamb of god we praise you you are worthy O oh lord Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore for He. Somebody worship, adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Let's go. celebrating Christmas today the reason for our salvation is Christ and we are here to celebrate and thank him for your love are you grateful for his love this morning I want to hear your praise somebody I don't see the excitement I want to hear you I want to hear your shout say hallelujah Hosanna in the highest 
Without your love, oh God, we are nothing. So we have come to praise you. Somebody give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. We can't live without your love, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your hands, everybody. We stand and we shout. There's no one nowhere compared to your love. You are holy. We stand and we shout. We can't live without your love. Somebody say, you are holy God. Put your hands together. Come on, everybody. Don't
of the name of Jesus the reason for the season the reason why we're celebrating today is Christmas I don't know what that means to you but we have a birth of our Savior the enemy is not happy today because something miraculous happened today and that is where we are here to rejoice somebody bless his holy name somebody worship worship and give him thanks if it's not for the Lord on your side you will not be here somebody if it's not for the Lord on your side on your left on your right in front of you behind you the Lord surrounding you with the armies of angels if it's not for him I don't know where I would be somebody give him praise give him worship say father I thank you I thank you King of Kings I thank you Lord of Lords the wonderful creator the mighty ruler is his name everlasting father the Prince of Peace his name is Emmanuel the King of Kings the Lion of the Lamb of Judah the Lion of the tribe of Judah the Rose of Sharon ancient of days the King of Kings before you O Lord there was no one and after you O God there's none other so we worship you and ascribe all the praise all the worship to the Lamb of Glory just like the wise kings went and presented their gifts to him I want you to present your gifts of worship unto him you may not have any gifts in your hand but the only gifts that you may have is your heart of worship your heart of worship somebody praise him somebody glorify him and we give you a heart of worship take all the love take all the honor take all the honor hallelujah we will worship the lamb of glory and we will worship the king of kings we will worship the lamb of glory oh Somebody worship. We will worship the Lamb of Glory. Somebody worship the King. We will worship the King of Kings. description there is no one like him he is God he is God all by himself there is no one like him no one that can be compared to him he is the I am that I am the risen king 
the one that was, the one that is, and the one that is to come. He is God all by himself. Celebrate your Redeemer this morning. Celebrate the one that loves you beyond you. Celebrate the one that looked past your sin, that looked past your guilt, that looked past your shame. Celebrate him this morning. He sent his son for you. Celebrate him. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. Father, we celebrate you this morning. We say thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sending your son for us, oh God. Father, we are grateful. We appreciate you this morning, oh God. A thousand tongues cannot thank you enough, oh God. But as a people, oh God, we come before you this morning. Daddy, to say we worship you. We worship you. We worship you for sending your son. We worship you. We reverence you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. This morning, we are going to be taking our two prayer um, points. And we are going to be reading Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of of peace hallelujah the prince of peace hallelujah brethren this morning we celebrate the birth of jesus and we also celebrate the everlasting life we have in him hallelujah our god is so good remember this is our month of he crowns the year with his goodness he is so good that is why he sent his son he sent his only son to come down and mingle with man what a wonderful god we serve the bible says in john 1 14 that he became flesh and dwell among you Ha! What a wonderful God we serve. So this morning, you might not have gold. You might not have frankincense. You might not have my, but I want us with a heart of gratitude to thank this God for sending his only son. Can you send your son to die for mankind? Can we send our son to die for mankind? But this God sent his one and only son for you and for me. So why don't you open your mouth together and pray this prayer with me. Hallelujah. Father, Thank you for coming to earth to redeem us. And for the abundant life we have in you. Thank you for being the prince of peace. And giving us your son. We celebrate your birth. Life. Death. And resurrection. In Jesus name. Change that into a prayer point and thank God this morning in Jesus name. Father, we just want to thank you for sending your son. For sending your son, oh God. Father, you are so good that you are too much. We cannot thank you enough. Our Redeemer, we cannot thank you enough. The Prince of Peace, we cannot thank you enough. The Lamb of God who taken away the sins of the world, we cannot thank you enough. Father, my Lord and my God, we might not have gold this morning. We might not have frankincense this morning. We might not have mud this morning. But as a people, oh God, we come this morning to say thank you. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our next prayer and point, we are going to read John 3 verse 16. John 3 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him, should not perish but have everlasting life hallelujah and we are also going to read john 1 12 john 1 12 says but as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name hallelujah brethren the reason why god loves you and i is just because he is god he is love our God is love. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you are rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you are young or old. He loves you. The Bible says he has loved you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. So this morning as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, open your hearts to him and may the blessings, may the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon each and every one of us in Jesus name. So join me as we pray this prayer point together saying, Father, Thank you for sacrificing your son on the cross of Calvary for me. Thank you that your blood has paid the full penalty for my sins. 
and that the power of sin in my life has been broken through him in Jesus name change that into a prayer point in Jesus name father we thank you for the sacrifice of the cross on the cross daddy we thank you for your only begotten son oh God daddy we thank you for paying the debt oh God that you did not owe daddy we thank you my Lord and my God daddy for being there for us all through this time from the very beginning when you created the world Lord you had us in mind oh God daddy we just say we are grateful as we celebrate your birth this morning daddy we say thank you thank you oh God for being faithful Thank you, oh God, for your goodness. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name, we have worshiped and prayed this morning. Amen. Amen. Please have your seats while we listen to our video announcement. to Winner's Church, a home for all nations. Now, let's dive right into our regularly scheduled announcements. Every Tuesday from 5 to 6 a.m., we join on the prayer line, and to join us, please dial 712-770-5505 and use access code 365044. Please join us every Wednesday for our midweek service. The service starts at 7.30 p.m. and will run through 9 p.m. Now, this is the time where you can actually ask those difficult Bible questions. Hope to see you there. Yes, and our Sunday service begins at 10 a.m. with Sunday school and is followed immediately by our celebration service from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And I guarantee you, you do not want to miss our praise and worship service. Now, talking about praise and worship, Louis, I really do not understand how people can miss praise and worship. It's like the highlight of a Sunday service. Right. VOJ definitely brings down the presence of the Lord with those amazing praise and worship. Hope you can make it for the praise and worship section. Now, the first Sunday of the month is our Thanksgiving service, and the service will be slightly extended to 1 p.m. The reason being is that this is the Sunday where we actually have time to celebrate the Lord in our local dialect. So we hope you understand. Yes, and if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we welcome you and we truly appreciate you. We believe that your steps were ordered here by God and that you will not leave here the same. And please don't be in a rush after the service as our pastor would like to meet with you briefly. Join us for our crossover service on December 31st at 9 p.m. Please make sure to invite your friends and family. You do not want to miss this. Our annual tissue drive is fast approaching, so we are currently accepting donations. We encourage you to be part of this spiritual exercise. You can drop off your donations at the FOIA or see Sister Ivory or Sister Lisa for more information. When giving your tithes or any monetary donation, please simply make your checks out to Winners Church or follow the Secure Give app instructions displayed. Yes, and if you need a ride to church, Please don't hesitate to dial 703-477-0419 and we promise the church van will be there to pick you up. And when we say we promise, we promise because they never disappoint. That's now right. to our online viewers, you are not forgotten. We thank you and we appreciate you for taking time out to join us every Sunday and every service that is being streamed online. We truly do love you. And it's not too early for me to say happy holidays because the Christmas is around the corner. My name is Queen Asiminaso. And I'm Louis Oza. And if there are any further announcements, our pastor will be sure to share those with you. Now, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. God bless you. the Lord. Praise the Lord somebody. 
we're celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and I want you all to know that we're not celebrating baby Jesus but we're celebrating King Jesus because he's no longer in the manger he is at the right hand of the Father and he is the King of Kings the one that has come he came to this world just to die for our sins I want you all to rise up to your feet as we sing this hymn this morning, hark the hair, the angel sing, and I want you to celebrate this song. Celebrate this song like you're celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. It's, it's three verse. Verse one. I'm the heaven angel sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy by God and sin us reconciled. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. How we doing this morning? Merry Christmas to every one of you. Can we just take these 60 seconds and celebrate one another? Walk around and wish them Merry Christmas.
Praise the Lord. Welcome to church, everyone. We are excited to have each and every one of you here. And if this is your first time here at Winners Church, we celebrate your presence here. We want to say thank you so much for coming to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with us today. Also, I see a lot of faces that have not seen in church for a while. It's good to see some of you. Some of you have grown some inch taller, some muscle added. You all know I'm talking about you. Praise God. Um, I'm here just to um, help us understand why we are here this morning. By God's grace, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Some arguments. Uh, one of my daughters asked me, Dad, was Jesus actually born December 25th? I said, I don't know. And I was born into it and I've been celebrating and I have no regrets, no complaint. I'm just happy that at least we get to celebrate a day for Jesus. All right, so that's why we're here. Um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s Day, we all gather somewhere, we do activities, we come together, right? Everything we celebrate, we come together. So why is it that when we do Christmas, everybody's locked up in their house with their chicken and talking? No, it's not your birthday, y'all. It's Jesus' birthday, so let's come to his house and make, celebrate him together, right? That's what we do. When you want to do your birthday, you bring your loved ones together. So that's the essence of having Christmas Sunday, Christmas service on Christmas Day. Are you glad you're here? So as we progress with the service, we'll be having a lot of songs, celebrating in hymns, dancing, and then the word will come. We will partake of communion and also Jesus will cut cake. And we will celebrate Jesus' cake. And then some of you might not be able to get a piece. But one thing is certain, you'll get communion. Would you rather have communion or cake? Somebody say both. All right, we're going to have to call Cheesecake Factory next time. So you, you have enough cake. Um, also, before I leave here, I, I want to personally invite you to our crossover night. You know, coming up 31st, you've seen the video. It's going to be an amazing night. And believe you me, Winners House is the best place to be on a night like that. Why? Because of the energy we're bringing, the celebration and the spirit of love. And then above all, the prophetic word. And you don't want to miss that night. I'm inviting you. So please clear your schedule. Invite your loved ones and be part of this. Can we just shout Merry Christmas to our online viewers? They're there. We're live. One more time, Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas to all our online viewers. We love you and we're glad we are all celebrating in good health. Many of you are looking wonderful this morning. After a while, there will be a time for you to present Jesus with your good uh, mark and frankincense. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and as they open their treasure. So I know your treasure is not just your golden watch. And your suit, the ten thousand dollar piece of suit you have on, but also you brought something for baby Jesus. So relax and enjoy the service. God bless you.
did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Good morning, church. Merry Christmas. The title of our special number today is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the reason for this season. He is the reason why we're here today. Let us be blessed as we listen. Amen. Savior come to serve The heavens declare his arrival The star above The place where he has come The promise of Salvation brought for us Jesus the promised Messiah Oh 
Christmas again. We cannot cease thanking God for this privilege he has given to us to celebrate another Christmas. We give God all the glory. Please turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas. We are all looking beautiful for Jesus because we respect the celebrant, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. This honor has been given to me today. We are celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to honor our pastor. I thank pastor and the first lady and the board of ministers and the board of trustees and all of you that has come. I thank you. I'm giving 25 minutes, so I'm going to, you know, to run with it. Praise the Lord. The title of this message is The Sacrificial Love of God Towards Men. Sacrificial Love of God Towards Men. I'm taking my text from the, the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8. It said, But God commended his love towards us. That in that when we are yet sinner, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. Yeah, the seasons, these seasons of Christmas come with so many activities, different type of activities, you know, with hurdles, with everything. And then the celebration come with different type of tradition. There are some places in America, even today, Santa Claus is given a higher honor, even like, you know, more than our Lord Jesus Christ. And a man was walking one day during winter, and he saw that all the trees were withered, all the leaves fell off, and they looked dead. But he was attracted to a tree that was still blossoming, green, looked beautiful. He came near the tree and he said, this is a symbol of eternal life. He chopped up the tree and then decorated it. Today, everybody is chopping up tree. You know, giving it a higher glory by decorating it with so many symbols. That when you look at them, it will tell you the story of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somewhere in Spain, they said, on Christmas Day, People go to the streets dancing and they singing for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ without really knowing the reality of Christmas of today. And somewhere in Italy, people will, will just gather family together, pray while they have their babies in a manger. That is the celebration. And somewhere in Australia, men and women where they will all rush to the beach. But what is the reality of Christmas? Well, I will not say that those activities are wrong because Apostle Paul told us in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 20:13, he said, Not he said, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. He said, all things are lawful for me, but not everything edify. So if we see a Christmas tree as an idol, then you don't have to put it. But if you see it as just a tree to be decorated and give you excitement, go ahead with it. Whatever we say, because I was, you know, someone was telling me that it's not right for a Christian to put on Christmas tree. So whatever it is, whatever edify you, whatever make you happy, you go ahead, you know, to the glory of God. In the book of Matthew chapter 16 from 13 to 17, Jesus was in a place called Caesarea in Philippi. He suddenly turned to his uh, disciples and said, who do men think the son of man is? And the disciples say, well, they said you are Jeremiah. They say you are John the Baptist. They say you are a liar. You are a liars. You know. And then he said, "Okay, that is what the people say." But to you, my disciple, that have worked with me for a long time, who do you think I am? 
Nobody knew who, who Jesus is. Even Peter. Because Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But it's my God, my Father in heaven that revealed it to you. Which means we don't know the truth except God revealed it to us. God revealed it to Peter. Flesh and blood did not reveal it to him. That was 2,000 years ago. But today, who is Jesus? Still, many people don't know Jesus. They said, oh, he is an angel. Some people say, oh, he is just an ordinary person. Some people say he is created. Some people say he is just a prophet. Some people said he did not die. He just ascended to heaven like uh, Enoch, like Elijah. Some people said, you know, they stole him away. You know, so many, peop many people say every other thing. But today, we believers, the children of God, who is the son of man? Who is Christ? So many of us, we still wonder. Praise the Lord. Some of us, we still wonder what Jesus is. Today, I'm speaking on the reality of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and God was, was, was God. The same was at the beginning. He said, God created all things through him and by him. Jesus is God, the son of the most high God. And if we go to the book of uh, Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6, he said, Who, being in the form of God, Taught it not robbery to be equal with God. What is he saying? Jesus is not struggling to be God. Jesus is not robbing almighty God to be a God. Unlike Lucifer who fought, who was fighting to be God. So there is no controversy that God is God. In the book of John 10, 10 John 10, 10, he said, I and my father are one. So we know that Jesus is God, the son of the most high God. Now, we know that Adam came to introduce sin, to introduce death into the world. But God needed his children that he had made in his own image to be free from destruction, from death, from what Adam has, has caused. And he needed a man. He needed a man, a man. He needed a man that is without sin. And he looked into the whole world. There was no man without sin. We have all sin and come short of the glory of God. One thing about God that I know, there are some things that he cannot do on his own. He needs a human being to do it. In the book of Exodus 20:19. Can we project it? Exodus 20, 19. Let me just tell the story. The Israelites have come and God was now ready to give them the law. And as God was speaking to them, there were lightning, there were trumpets, there was fire, there was all kind of noise. You know, thunder, earthquake, so many things happened. And the children of Israel, the Israelites, they were terrified. They were so afraid. And they were begging Moses. Moses, please, we don't want God to speak to us. Please, you speak to us yourself. And if we go to the book of Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 18, we say that God answered that prayer. And he said he will no longer speak directly to men. Because the Israelites said, we, are, we will die. Don't speak to us anymore. God answered their prayer. You know, and God said, from now, I will not speak directly to you. I will always speak through a man, through prophet. And Exodus 34, 35, as Moses went up to God and he spent many days with God, in fact, nobody could see his face. Nobody, because the face shone, it was so radiant with the glory of God that nobody can stand with him. 
And uh, even the brother Aaron was terrified, was afraid. So that when he wants to see the people, he will cover his face with veil. And when he is with God, he will open his veil. What am I saying is that God Almighty cannot come here and do all this work that he has done as God. So he decided that our Lord Jesus Christ had to be born as a man, but he still remained full God. He was God Almighty. So as he came as flesh, he became like us. He drank, he was thirsty, he was weary, he was sorrowful, he was, in, you know. So he came as a human being, but he was God, 100% God, 100% human being. Jesus had two natures, nature of man and nature of God in one personality. Apostle Paul wanted to explain the incarnation to the Christians in Philippi. So, and he, he gave a significant scriptures to explain the, what Jesus went through, the sacrifice he went through to have our own nature. We have to leave so many things behind in order to have our nature. So he now have two nations, yeah, Two, two natures in one personality without losing, losing anything in humanity, without losing anything, you know, being um, divine. He did not empty himself of his deity. He did not empty himself of divinity. He did not empty himself of anything. And he was a full God and he was a full man in order to be sacrificed for all of us. Praise the Lord. And if we go to the book of uh, Philippians chapter 2, 7 to 11, please come on, we project it so that Philippians 2, 7. He said, for God, for God to have human nature, this is all the sacrifices he went through. He said, but being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Please, let's start from 7, please. But made himself of no reputation. He made himself of nothing to be a human being, even though he is God. And took upon him the form of a servant. I was made in the likeness of men. Jesus put upon him the attitude, the character of a servant so that he can be able to serve us can be able to heal us, can be able to teach. Imagine God with all his glory coming to teach us, we all will be terrified. We all we will die. So Jesus has to take in all these things. Please, can you project it again? I'm not finished. He, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of a man. He put upon him the form of a servant, the lowest status in order that he can serve us. Because Jesus has come to serve and not to be served. He went about serving human beings, healing, teaching, doing eight with sinners, did everything as a man, because God cannot eat with sinners. But he came and took this nature upon himself in the likeness of men, so he can relate with men, men with men, to relate with us. So Jesus added, you know, that character unto him. The men we should know that these two natures were not mixed, but they were united to make a personality. So our Lord Jesus Christ was our God-man. He is God and he is man. Praise the Lord. And there are other things he did. He emptied himself. He, complete, he emptied himself of the glory of face-to-face -face with God. Because when you come face to face with God, that glory will be upon you. Your face will so shine that nobody will be able to look at, look at you. He set it aside. He set the glory aside. Okay, if we go to the book of John 17, 5. Please, let's project John 17, 5. John, he said, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, after Jesus has finished the will of God, he's now asking God, please let me have my glory back. Praise the Lord. 
He said, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now Jesus is cast, asking for his glory back. Because be, before he, he was made a human being, he lay aside that glory because of us. Praise the Lord. There's another thing Jesus did. He completely submitted himself to the will of his father. Matthew 26, 39. Please, can we see Matthew 26, 39? Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, it will be possible. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, as thou will. Now, Jesus now in nature, he's now doing the will of God, not his own will. Remember, he is God, and now he's, he's a human being again, so he is not acting as God. He's not asking as a human being. He had to be submissive to Almighty Father. All this he did because of us. And he went, he completed something, and he went a little further. Okay, we've seen that. Another thing that he did, he considered the interests of his father more important than his own. 24-36. Matthew 24-36. Um, he considered the interests of his father more important than his own. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. He's doing the, you know, the will of his father, the interest of his father. He is, he, you know, he's supposed to know when he is coming, but now he doesn't know. Praise the Lord. He gave up his privileges and took upon himself existence as a man while remaining fully God. The nature of man united with God for one personality. Jesus, to nature, united to be a personality. This is the reality of Christmas. How God become a, a, a human being like us. If we know that reality, we should be able to be so grateful to God for, for condescending so low, for adding to himself human nature so that he can satisfy us, so that he can heal us, so that he can go to the cross and die. Can we see what Jesus has done for us? He has done so much. Why did he come? He came to establish the kingdom of God on earth. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom that reigns in our heart. It's not a physical kingdom. It's a spiritual thing that reigns in the heart of Christians. But there will be a time when there will be a physical kingdom in which Jesus will be the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and we the believers will reign with us. I think we are hoping for that. We are now, this is a spiritual kingdom that reigns in our heart. But there will be a time when there will be a physical kingdom in which Jesus will reign here on earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and we the believers we reign with him. We are waiting for that day in Jesus' name. Another thing is that he has come to destroy the work of the devil. First John 3, he said, the devil sinned from the, from the beginning. For the purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We know that the devil has introduced sin into the world. We know his ministry is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus destroyed that work that he went to the cross and died so that we will not die. He resurrected with his physical glorified body so that we too, we can be resurrected. He is the first man to go to heaven. How do we know that? In fact, he ascended to heaven with a full man and full God. When he was living, he did not drop the, the humanity. He went with full man, with full God. So Jesus is the first man to go to heaven. Do you know that uh, even before Jesus ascended, David, all the prophets, all the men of God, they were not in heaven. But when he was going to heaven, they all followed him into heaven. So if a man is in heaven, Jesus is a man, we all are, are sure, you know, we have that assurance that we all will go there. Praise the Lord. 
He came to fulfill prophecy. About 100 prophecies of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, have been fulfilled. We cannot go in there. All the prophecy about his birth, about being born of a virgin, a virgin Mary, or being bruised, wounded, you know, for our transgression, all that went through, they were all prophesied by prophets, all the prophets, even the, the prophecy in the New Testament. The, the one that we are waiting to be fulfilled is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which I know that each and every one of us are waiting. Father, we thank you. Praise the Lord. He has come to make his spirit available to them that believe. Before Jesus Christ came, no one had Holy Spirit in him. Only very few that God wanted to use. People like David and very few of them had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. None of them had indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit come upon them, use them, and then, you know, go away. But today, we all have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Is that not something? We have God living in us. We have our Lord Jesus Christ living in us. In fact, when I think of it, it brings tears to my eyes. That our Lord Jesus Christ, that the Spirit can indwell in a human being. Is that not something? That's why we should be, you know, very happy on Christmas Day. Not because of the activities, because many people are even dying for, uh, during these activities. People are running head scatter. They, they don't know the reality of Christmas. But we, we know it. And the Lord will bless us for that in Jesus' name. To provide the promised seed of Abraham. If we go to the book of Genesis 3.15, please can we just see Genesis 3.15 please? I will put an image between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. The seed this place is talking about is, is our Lord Jesus Christ. This was a prophecy long time ago, and that is the seed that have come, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. To reveal the, his character to humanity. Brethren, Jesus has come to reveal his character to us. Remember his humility. Remember his obedience to God. Remember his, his, his submitting to the will of God. Remember all the works that he has done. Remember his meekness. Remember his love towards even the sinners. All this that he has done is for him to show us example of how we believers ought to live on earth. He has come to show us how he went through temptations and overcome. He has come to show us. So that we too we know the weapons. We use the weapons that he used and that is the word of God. This battle is every day, every day. The devil will just give you a time for some time and he will come back. So we are in this battle all the time. He knew it and that's why he has come to show us how to pass through temptation and overcome. If we want to overcome, we, you know, we look unto Jesus and see the way he overcome. We too, we overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. So the humanity of, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ is something we have to emulate. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 9. Please, can we see that? Philippians, it says, Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, then. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. All these things are reward from God Almighty. Brethren, there's nothing we do this day when we walk the walk that God has sent us, there's no way God will withhold his blessings, his reward from us. Because for, of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has served, the, he served his father willingly. He was obedient. He was humble. At the end of it all, God exalted him. You know, he gave him a name that is above all names. That at the mention of that name, every knee will bow and all tongue will confess that he is Lord. Brethren, he said, under the, he said, in heaven, on earth, under the earth, 
In heaven, people are still testifying. Yes, they are praising God and testifying. And under the earth, which is hellfire, they are testifying, but it's too late. They are testifying because they have known the truth. You know, they have known the truth and they are testifying, but it's too late. They are saying, how, how, how I wish I listened to that woman that was preaching. How I wish... Oh, how I wish I remember that pastor that was preaching. How I wish somebody would go and tell my brother. How I wish somebody would go and tell my son. But it was too late. But here on earth, we are testifying. If we are testifying here on earth, so it is time for us to make up our mind. And I leave this for pastor. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. We sing glory, lift your voice and say.
see him. Put your hands together and celebrate him. And please take your seats. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. In furtherance of this uh, meeting this morning, we want to partake of the blood. But before we do that, I want to just charge us this morning. Um, what we're about to do is very significant and is highly spiritual. It is not um, something we must just do casually. We must embrace the significance of this meal that is called communion. And to help us have a good understanding of what we're about to do. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Talking about Jesus. The Bible says, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body has thou prepared me. Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. That means you will no longer, you are no longer interested in sacrifices and offerings of goats and, and lambs and doves and all that. But the body has thou prepared me. So the, the Jesus we are celebrating is a gift from the Father. He prepared him as a gift and offered him to us. And he watched us take him to the cross, killed him there. Although that happened because he laid his life down. What I'm saying is this, that what we're about to partake of also, Jesus calls it his body. But the father, as he was planning for him to come, prepared us a body. And the body said, I am tired of taking goats and lamb every year. In the Old Testament, every year they will come once, appear the priest, the high priest will appear and then they will bring the sacrifice, they will offer goods. So every year they were bringing offerings and they were bringing goats and they were bringing all kinds of turtle doves to come and offer. But the Lord said, enough of these doves, enough of this yearly sacrifice. I want something that will be once and for all. And he said, the only way I can have what is once and for all is for me to give them a body. Goats you brought, lambs you brought, turtle doves you brought. But what we are celebrating today is what God brought to us. And that is his son. Praise ye the Lord. So before we do that also, there is, a, there is a, um, something that took place in Luke chapter 7 verse 36 all the way to 39 there about uh, or 40. A Pharisee invites Jesus to his house for, for dinner. And Jesus was there having dinner with this Pharisee. And a woman walked in with a box of oil. You've already, you know the story. And she broke the oil at the feet of Jesus. And was in tears and was rubbing the feet of Jesus with her hair. You know, as an act of worship. The same Pharisee that invited Jesus to his house. That was having dinner with Jesus looked at jesus and he said if this man was to be a true prophet he will know that this woman that is worshiping and using her tears on his feet is a sinner or a prostitute what am i trying to say we are all gathered here today but we have different reason to be here some came to show what they are wearing some came to just come as a social gathering some came for different kinds of reason this man invited jesus to his house yet he didn't believe that is the messiah he said if this was to be a true man of god he would have known that this woman is a prostitute but jesus responded at the end of the day but that's not where i'm going i want you to know the reason we are gathered here today and I want one more time, let's celebrate the word that came. We are not coming together for show. That's why when I sang that song, all of you are looking like I'm entertaining you. I'm not entertaining you. We should all worship together. If we understand why we are here, you are the lamb upon the throne. I'm talking about the same Jesus they just told you what he went through, what he came to bring to pass for you. And I have to pump you up to worship. No. So we're going to worship again. Is that okay? 
a body has thou prepared for me. So if I may have the stewards, please take their place as we distribute the communion. But before we do that, please hold off. If you're not born again, this will be the best day to be born again. I can't remember the day I gave my life to Christ. I can't remember the dates. But you might be able to. If you can dive into today and say, you know what? I don't want to just be doing Christmas anymore. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be born again. I want to accept him as my Lord and my personal Savior. If you are here and you, the Holy Spirit is ministering to you to make that decision. May I ask you, just lift your right hand where you are and I will pray with you. And today will be that day that you give your life to Christ. Lift your hand wherever you are and I will pray with you. A simple prayer and you'll be on your journey to having a wonderful and amazing time with Jesus. And your eternity will be guaranteed also with him. Anyone here? All right, I don't see any hand. Oh, please let's celebrate Jesus one more time. We are all saved because of a day like this. So as the communion comes, please do not take if you are not born again. And if you are living in sin, let me be clear. If you are living in sin, do not take the communion. Leave it alone. Nobody is judging you. You are a work in progress. If you are living in sin, what does it mean to live in sin? You are sleeping with somebody that is not your husband. You live here today. You are going to that same house. Do not take communion. It's an abuse on the blood. You may sin, but if you're living in sin and you know you're living a lifestyle that is a sinful one, do not take of this communion, please. What are we celebrating? We're celebrating the new covenant. In Luke chapter 22, verse 20. In Luke chapter 22, verse 20. He said, and in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. What is the new covenant? Is the covenant of love. Is the covenant of love, the love of Christ. That's what we are celebrating today. The one that has loved us more than anyone else could love us. Can go ahead, choir. Head of life, send down from glory. Mm. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word. Bread of life, send down from. Why I stand up?
shall we rise to our feet? No, we usually sit down taking the communion. But let's rise, everybody, please. Choir, come up. You're going to do the second hymn just right after this. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Please repeat after me. Say, Thank you, Lord, for the provision of the body. I receive it and everything it represents with faith and with thanksgiving in jesus name amen you may eat after the same manner also he took the cup when he has stopped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the lost dead till he comes. Repeat after me and say, Father, thank you for the provision of the cup of your blood. This is the blessing. I receive it and everything it represents healing deliverance breakthrough sound mind and eternity with you I receive it with faith and with thanksgiving in Jesus name amen you may drink why you please take us to the second hymn in his presence 
Look, sorry, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Matthew 2, 11. It says that when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and man. It is time for us to give. But the first thing we see there is that they first saw Jesus before they gave to Jesus. So what you will give this morning will be as a result or in proportion to how far you have seen Jesus. So if you have seen Jesus in your life, not just today, and not just how far you've seen him, now whom you see him to be, do not see a baby in a manger, see a king. Our offering today is an offering we are giving to our king, celebrating our king. Nobody goes to, well, here in America, I see a lot of it. People go to somebody's birthday empty-handed. But I think it's rude. So let's not be rude with Jesus. All right, so package your offerings. If you're writing a check, make it out to, to Winners Church. You can also go to Secure Give and put it there and, you know, memo it. Jesus' birthday. All right, Jesus' birthday gift. You can put it on Secure Give or you can write, you know, write a check, get an envelope and please complete it. As you do so, may the Lord bless you richly in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, can we have the, the cake? Bring forth the cake. We will take the offering and cut the cake if it's your birthday if today is your birthday if today is your birthday i heard today is somebody's birthday but i think the person is not paying attention to what we're saying from the altar if today is your birthday anyone celebrating their birthday today born on christmas day give your offering first before you come up here Put your offering in the basket, then you come up here. Birthday celebrants, if today is your birthday, please come up, come up quickly. Please come up. Just the two of you. All right. Are we done with the offerings? Quiet, get ready. We're going to sing Feliz Navidad. It's too quiet here. Are we done with the offerings? All right. Quickly, we're going to cut the cake. Father, bless every hand that has given. Increase and enlarge them, Lord. We decree and declare that it shall be well with them. As today, we heard about the wise men. May these ones, may their life be filled with wisdom. Everyone that has given in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can she bring the knife to cut the cake, please? Feliz Is there? Okay, put it where it should be. Feliz Can we rise? It's not your time. It's not your time. When it says sing, you won't sing now. It's not your time. People are singing like just woke up somewhere today, this morning. Hold your this thing. Everybody rise to your feet. We're going to cut the cake. After we cut the cake, sing with life. We want to dance. It's Jesus' birthday. Okay, we're going to spell. What do we spell? Let's spell love. We're celebrating the love of God for us. Somebody give me an L. What's the next word? Followed by N. Who's that? Well, who's that? Jesus is love. God, the cake. God bless you. Merry, uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I wish I was born on Christmas Day. 
Praise the Lord. All right, choir, come up now and sing alive. We want to celebrate Jesus. Is that something we can do in the next five minutes? We're going to do it the way we do it. Please take our seat briefly. Let's celebrate the choir. They made it. Quickly, I want to um, welcome those that are here with us for the first time. It's your first time at Winners Church. Someone invited you or you saw the advert and decided to come worship with us today. We want to celebrate your presence. It's your first time at Winners Church. Just lift your right hand where you are. We want to welcome you. Glory to God. Praise God. There's another two people on this side. Can we win us around them? Please shake their hands and make them feel welcome. We're glad you came to worship with us today. God bless you richly. If you don't have a local church, this is the place to be. 
uh, we're big enough to contain you, small enough to get to know you. Our vision is simple, restore hope, help you realize your purpose, and empower you to maximize your potential. And in all this, all we're doing is expanding the kingdom of God. We love you and we celebrate your presence here today. Please take your seats. They will be giving you a form. Kindly take time, fill it out. Make sure your phone number is there. I will personally call you this week and chat up with you. Is that okay? God bless you. One more time, winners. Let's put our hands together as we celebrate them. And rise to our feet as we bring this amazing service to a close. Can we invite Dr. Wright to come and please just help us share the grace this afternoon you can do better than that dr Wright. thank you sir did you have a good time today are you ready to go home i'm not ready to go home yet pastor let's stay let's stay for another hour okay so we have pictures for um the children right and the christmas gift for all the children their names are on it, so go there, uh, courtesy of the church. There's a, um, what's it called, a studio back here where they will go take pictures if they want to take pictures in one of the classrooms, and then there's cake to eat. So the door will be open for another 30 minutes because it's Christmas. Pastor was here till very late yesterday. yesterday. Today, I'm going home to do Christmas with my family. Hallelujah. Shall we share the grace? Father, first of all, we thank you. We thank you for the first Christmas at Winner's Church. The first Christmas at Winner's Church. And we give you the glory for that. We pray a special blessing over this leader, this man of God, and this first lady who, who lead this great church into the next century, into the next accomplishment, the next glory for God. Be with them and bless their home. Meet every need they will ever have. And Lord, let them really win souls and make more disciples. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Go in peace, return with testimony. Shalom. Merry Christmas.